1944, when NCAI was created, uh, it was at a time when our elders really didn't have a lot as far as economic development and a lot of income for a lot of tribes across the nation. And so they came together to band together to be stronger as one organization. Going into our 75th year, we've only become stronger and stronger. And this is what our elders envisioned uh, 74 years ago when this organization was created. And so we get two to 300 tribes from across the nation coming to NCAI to speak with one voice. Once again, we have to use their tools that are in their woodshed that they've created to point out to them uh, the flaws that they're using in this process. And there are flaws, like you pointed out. I mean, there are steps that they have to follow, and they're not. Tribes around the country are going to have the chance to have their voices heard in, in all over the country, the eastern tribes, the midwestern tribes, the southern tribes, Oklahoma tribes. The sooner we can segregate the gaming issue out of this, the less difficulty we're going to have in getting political support on the Hill and perhaps even within the administration. When the Trump administration first rolled out their budget, there was a, uh, a consideration to eliminate many of our tribal programs and budgets that would uh, hurt the poorest of the poor people. We still have some third world conditions out there where uh, one tribe, its yearly income per member is only $3,000 a year. In Alaska, you still have villages where 40% of the villages are without the basic necessities that we take for granted. Being able to take a shower in the morning, to be able to have running water, and to be able to have indoor plumbing. As we come together to talk about, to try to tell our story to the federal government in hopes that they hear us and that they'll work with us to uh, deal with this. Even though we're 567 individual sovereigns and, and state-recognized tribes, we come here because we have the same issues. We have housing issues, we have health care issues, we have law enforcement issues, infrastructure issues, so it transcends all of the nation. We don't want to have the debate on what's causing all this, but we want D.C. to know that it's happening to indigenous communities who are place-based societies where we just can't pick up and move. We can't move our reservations. I mean, we're where we are, and we're seeing impacts because of the environment. So they could hear our tribal members whose people have lived in a place since time immemorial to be able to hear their stories on what the impacts are happening to them. So all these issues, I could just keep going on, but uh, I think that's enough for today.